Services Leadership Association Joint Women's Leadership Virtual Series. I am Nan Silverman Wise. I'm with the Coast Guard and uh, Board of Directors for SSLA. I'd like to thank our sponsors for uh, our SSLA sponsors, Johnson & Johnson, who are here with us today, USAA and Amazon. So those of you who are joining us, uh, if you're on the Zoom platform, please submit your questions in the Q&A chat box, or the Q&A box, and keep the discussion going in the chat. We will address your questions later in the session after our panelists get a chance to answer a few from me and tell us you tell them about, tell you about themselves. Whew. Um, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, please type your questions into the chat and our Facebook moderator will answer those questions in real time. We do have a disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this webinar are not endorsed by and do not represent the views of the Sea Services Leadership Association, the Department of Defense, the Department of Homeland Security, or other, other federal entities. And note that this session is being recorded. Johnson & Johnson is the world's largest and most broadly based healthcare company. We're profoundly changing the trajectory of health for humanity. We make a huge impact on people's lives. All about values, we write them in stone. Values like diversity and inclusion. sacrifices you made. And to our employees, thank you for your ongoing efforts that truly make a difference in the lives of veterans. At Johnson & Johnson, we're making an impact. Join us. Johnson & Johnson certainly is um, supportive of our military community, and today we're here with our sixth in our Jules virtual series, continuing your service professional opportunities in the healthcare and life sciences. So maybe you're looking for a transition into healthcare and life sciences. In this session provided by j, j we will give you a broad understanding of the roles and opportunities available there. Our panelists will share their journeys into healthcare and what made them stay. They'll speak on industry trends and how your skills can translate. Please welcome Kathy Widmer, Erica Jeffries Perdo, and Katie Butler. Kathy is our, um, sorry, Kathy Widmer is the company group chairman for the consumer business for North America and Latin America. Erica Jeffries Perdo is the chief of staff and senior director, portfolio and process management. And Katie Butler is a senior brand manager of the pain and cold business. Kathy, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm happy to. I wanted to say first, thanks for having me. And I know um, these events are really challenging, both from a technology standpoint and just because it's just, it's just a little bit, takes a little bit more effort. So I wanted to thank those who put it together for the passion that goes behind putting together a great event like this. Um, 
I'm a, I'm a West Point graduate. I served in the field artillery after graduation for five years and then came straight to J&J &J from there. Um, J&J &J was running a pretty significant recruiting effort uh, into supply chain at the time that I joined the company. So I came in to our supply chain organization um, and I'm thankful that lots of people love supply chain, but I didn't really love it. I wasn't really sure, you know, what I was getting myself into. I just wanted to join this great company. So once I got here, um, I sort of set my sights on figuring out what in the company um, was interesting to me. And I decided I really wanted to be a commercial leader. And over the course of time, um, was able to make a cross-functional move over into marketing. I did um, take a step back. Uh, career-wise um, from a level standpoint in order to make that move and then just started a progression of um, experiences across a number of our brands and categories in J&J &J. Um, and, um, and actually left the company in 2009 for a brief stint to be chief marketing officer of a beauty company in New York um, but then had a change of heart and decided to turn around and come back. So cumulatively, I've been at J&J &J now for 25 years. Uh, I've worked on pretty much all of our consumer brands to include Tylenol, Neutrogena, Aveeno, Listerine, Band-Aid, Reach. Um, we have quite the extensive portfolio here and they're super fun to work on. Um, I'm a mother of three daughters who all live and work in New York ordinarily, but right now they're living and working with me. Um, at home in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and, uh, and that's my story. And I'll pass it on over to Erica. Thank you, Kathy. And I also want to echo thanks of the Sea Services Leadership Association. Um, really great to be here in this virtual environment. Awesome that we can continue to do things like this with the use of technology. So thanks again for everybody that put this together. Um, I'm Erica Jeffrey Prado, and I have been at J&J just a little over two years and spent most of my career in the defense industry. Like Kathy, I am a West Point woman, and I have uh, had the pleasure of being an aviation officer and flying Black Hawk helicopters copters while I was in the Army, and uh, only had the opportunity to do it for five years before being medically retired, but went from that to being focused in the defense industry for most of my career. So I spent a number of years in management consulting uh, in the area of national security and policy and um, had the great opportunity to be a White House fellow and um, in the Obama administration and spent an extra year as an appointee there working at the federal level of government. And from there went back into aerospace and defense um, for a short time before my most recent role before coming to J&J &J, where I led the Department of Veterans Affairs for the state of Illinois. So um, at j and I just um, will talk more about it obviously as we get into the, the questions, but it's just been a phenomenal journey. I knew as soon as I walked through our museum at Johnson & Johnson that I had to be part of this company. Um, it just has a tremendous North Star, which is our credo and just our purpose and commitment to patients and communities and all of our customers. So really uh, happy to be here to speak with all of you about uh, the healthcare industry. So looking forward to the discussion and I will turn it over to Kate. Hi, good morning everyone. So I just also wanna echo um, what Kathy and Erica said Really happy to be here and to help others in their journey as they explore different areas and different professions and industry. Um, so I'm Katiria Butler. I go by Katie for short. Uh, I spent 10 years in the Army. I received my commission through ROTC, was an intelligence officer, met my husband actually during Hurricane Katrina in the military. We have two kids, um, a boy and a girl, uh, and we live in Pennsylvania. When I got out of the military, I first joined uh, the Boeing company, had a role there where I worked in R&D for a little bit, but really wanted to get out of the defense industry and wanted to always had an interest in healthcare since I was a little girl. So uh, really saw an opportunity to join Johnson & Johnson, which is you know, a very credo-based organization, very values-based business. Um, and I thought that that would be a good fit. I took a role in the medical device business, started out in quality, uh, did that for a little bit and then moved on to supply chain in the consumer business. Then I transitioned into a corporate role where I 
uh, managed acquisitions for the organization in both the medical device business and the consumer business, and then finally made the transition over to marketing, uh, which is the area that I really love and, and the part um, that of my career that I, I'm focused on growing in. So I currently lead the pain and the cold business uh, for Johnson & Johnson. Wow, well, thank you, ladies. Uh, very interesting backgrounds for sure. And uh, to me, it's interesting to hear that you came from a service industry in the military and went to a, found yourselves in a service industry in Johnson & Johnson. So we'll take questions from the audience later, uh, but Kathy, let's start with you. As a company group chairman for j and you've been extremely successful. How, um, what do you think has been a differentiator in being so successful in this industry? My, my, first, my first role in j and just for some perspective is I came in, I, I was, a, before I left the artillery, I was a, bat, I was a field artillery battery commander came into J&J &J as a night shift supervisor working in a plant making stay free maxi pads. So um, it's been a long, it's been a long way since, since there, but it was, it was, like I said, I, I came into supply chain. It was back in, back in, in, at that time, that was a very common pathway into um, um, businesses like J&J and, &J. and for me, it was just, I think the the differentiator, probably more than anything, it was, it was a willingness to, to get the, the career path that I wanted for the long term was a willingness to start over a couple of times. So I started over leaving the military and coming to J&J. &J, um, and then after spending a number of years in J&J &J and deciding that I really wanted to be on the commercial side, and most of our leadership comes up through the commercial side of J&J, &J, um, you know, I started over again as an entry level marketer in my mid thirties and, um, and then progressed and accelerated from there. And what, what I have found is when you, it's, it's a pretty humbling experience to leave the military because we're given so much responsibility at such a young tenure in our careers in the military. And it's just different in business. And so that took a little bit of getting used to, but I think that the, when you land in your first role or whatever role you, you ultimately find that's the right fit for you, being really good at that job functionally, I always feel is job one. There's a lot of other things to figure out in terms of the networking of a corporation or the politics of a corporation or how to career path, but, but nothing replaces being incredibly competent at your current job. So I always say your current job is job one. And then once you've mastered that, when you layer on, what you brought from your experience in the military, which is fantastic organizational agility, leadership skills, and you layer that on, it's such an accelerator um, to your career that you know, even if you had to take a pause here and there to land in the right role, that combination of um, your prior self and your current self in, in, in a corporation just accelerates you faster generally, um, I've seen than peers and it's and it, it's a real advantage and that's probably the single biggest accelerator for me is just putting together those two worlds the you know being good at my job and then adding the military experience to it wonderful and uh, that's that makes sense in every job we're doing so that's good to hear so uh currently you're currently the vice chairman of the board of directors for the wounded warrior project and led the veterans leadership council which is an employee resource group how has giving back to the veteran community personally impacted you? I mean, I think I, I think so highly of, of giving back and sort of paying forward, um, you know, all of the um, good experiences that I've had. But I will say that it was, you know, earlier in my career, I'm telling you, all I had the time to do was do my job well and raise my kids. And I really didn't have a lot of bandwidth past that um, to engage in causes that I really cared about, but I just really didn't feel like I had, I had the bandwidth. And it, it's, it's funny, but true that as soon as my, you know, as soon as my last daughter went off to college, my bandwidth pretty much doubled. Um, you know, you, you sort of have two jobs uh, as a mom and then suddenly I had one again. And so, 
um, there was plenty of room in my life for, for other things. And what I like about getting to this point in career is the ability to make worlds connect. So in J and J, we have a great veterans community, and we have Veterans Leadership Council. Actually, I co-chaired it with Katie. You see here um, for uh, a year. Uh, I think it was now two years ago. We, she and I co-chaired together, which is our community of veterans and support for them internal to J and J, but also um, coordinating our efforts for causes we care about outside of J and J. At the same time, I was sitting on the board of directors for Wounded Warrior Project. I've been with them for three years. And they do a ton of work in, um, they have a, a, a program called Warrior Care Network, which is focused on brain health of wounded warriors, PTSD, suicide prevention, depression. And at J&J, &J, we have a neuroscience group. And so that neuroscience group is focused on a lot of the same things and bringing those two efforts together it equals more than the sum of their parts. And it's just great at, to be at a point in life where I actually have the visibility to these various worlds and have the ability to try and connect them um, because certainly the, the, the combination is greater than either one of them alone and it's incredibly satisfying. Well, thank you. And it's, um, it's nice to have you do all those and then join us here at SSLA. So we're happy to have you again. Um, you mentioned that well so you spent most of your time in the healthcare industry but you did take a little break can you tell us about a little bit more about the time that you switched industries and what really brought you back to j and j yeah i i also want to say what what caused me to do it because i think this is true true of so many people if you're going to have a long career you know things go right things go wrong and 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 one of the things you know my experience right before i left j and j which I've learned a ton from, um, is I had one, one assignment out of probably 20 assignments at, before that point where my manager didn't, I, I, I think she didn't see my value. And it was probably the first time in my career that I felt like I wasn't valued. It was an unusual circumstance. It, it's unusual, but it does happen. And in retrospect, if I had listen to good advice that I was given. And frankly, some of that advice came from our current CEO, but I chose to ignore it at the time and decided that I was gonna look for opportunities outside of the company um, rather than sort of change my life inside the company. And unlike the military, the thing that's great about these big, big corporations or a company like Johnson & Johnson is if you don't like your, if you, if you wanna change your current circumstance or something isn't quite working for you, there's so much opportunity in the organization to shift and do something different or learn something different. And I think back then I was unable to see that. And so I, I left the company kind of in a hurry, um, probably didn't you know, research that as much as I should have. And I went on to a beauty company in New York and there were things I really liked about it. I liked New York a lot more than I thought I would. Um, all my, you know, my daughters were living there, so I got to have an extra amount of time with them. Otherwise, I probably would have come back sooner. Um, it was a small company, very agile, very externally focused. I, I learned a lot from the experience, but I think all the way up until the point that I left J&J, &J, in, my, in my entire life, I'd never been in an organization that wasn't driven by purpose whether it was the military or West Point or Johnson & Johnson, all of these are organizations that have purpose beyond your paycheck. And I realized that I couldn't really work anywhere else, that I needed to work in a values-based organization. So I kept ties back at J&J &J, and I feel very fortunate that um, at the time that I was ready to come back, the, the corporation brought me back and I've been back for five years and super happy with that decision. So. I guess in retrospect, I would just, all I would say about that whole experience is purpose really matters. If it matters for you, like it matters to me, this, this was the right fit for me, but you know, mistakes get made, you learn from them and then you just keep going and, and it worked out. Well, that's terrific. And I'm, I'm sure Jane Jay is happy to have you back. So thanks. It's nice to hear that there is a purpose, um, you know, basis behind J and J and, Erica, I know you were the director for the Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs, obviously purpose-driven. 
but can you compare that side of the healthcare industry to working for Johnson & Johnson? Sure, so I would say that working at the Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs gave me my first foray into the healthcare space, but even that was just a very finite degree to specific areas relating to the Veterans Administration. So um, when it came time for me to make a move, I really focused on the healthcare industry because I had had that small foray into the healthcare industry, but really looking broadly at the industry because of how much innovation there is, how much growth there is in the industry, how, how broad the industry is. And there were just a number of aspects of the healthcare industry that really resonated with me. And to Kathy's point, a big part of that was purpose. And I think Katie mentioned it in her intro, uh, her intro as well, is that you know being part of a um, value-based company and really having a focus on your values. I think that's something that all veterans carry with them all the time, that we, we, we need that connection to purpose to drive us every single day. So even though I'm not on what we might call the front lines of healthcare, I definitely feel connected to Johnson Johnson's purpose every single day. Um, and I think being in the healthcare industry is more than what we might naturally think of it as being. So, you know, that frontline care or um, developing life-saving pharmaceuticals or life-changing medical devices or amazing consumer products, um, we think about that in the healthcare space. But then there's, of course, the rest of the healthcare industry that deals with insurance and payers and supply chain, as both Kathy and Katie talked about, and HR and finance or compliance or quality control or on and on and on. Um, and you can really find ways to evolve your career um, within the healthcare industry, which is, of course, a much longer conversation. But that's really what brought me to J&J &J and brought me to this industry was just knowing that I could do a number of different things and I could grow my career in a value-based company. And if you hear my my little girls in the background, I forgive me. Uh, I do have two little ones, a two-year-old and a four-year-old. So that's part of my job is being a mom. So Kathy, I look forward to the day when um, maybe I just have one job, but I don't want to rush it. I'm enjoying every minute of this time right yeah, now. Don't be in a hurry. <laughs> well, and it's an interesting, um, interesting time to have such neat coworkers, right? They get you to take a little break. So that's wonderful. Uh, so your current roles within the shared services, uh, within shared services in J&J, &J, can you tell us a little more about really what that means and how it was an entry point for you? And then also sure. how you see your career going in healthcare? So, you know, I'll start by kind of defining a little bit of what shared services is. Um, typically within a larger organization, the shared services group is the part of the business that helps to consolidate the business operations of the broader enterprise. And the goal really of that group is to provide a delivery model that helps the business to focus on efforts that support their business while freeing up their time um, to really grow their business um, in our organization. And it can look different in different organizations, but in Johnson & Johnson, our shared services group focuses on consolidating the business operations for HR, finance, and procurement into one single group where what we call global services. Um, so our shared services business, or some call it global business services, in our operation, we call it global services. So prior to coming to J&J, &J, I had never been in the shared services world, um, but with my limited healthcare background, it was a great entry point for me into a company as big as J&J. So I think I mentioned in my introduction, I've only been at J&J &J for two years, um, but coming in at that entry point was a place where I felt I could kind of speak the language. I, I definitely was not fluent, um, but I felt like I could pick things up quickly despite the deep learning curve that I had of the healthcare industry and really of J&J &J itself. Um, and I would say that really the best part of being a veteran, or one of many great things about being a veteran, is really our agility and our ability to succeed in spaces of ambiguity. We can leverage those capabilities to really learn quick, quickly and begin adding value as soon as we come into an organization. So Kathy talked a lot about that, and I'm, I'm sure Katie will too. It's just a theme that we've seen, you know, as veterans transition from one thing to the next and leaving the military isn't going to be your first transition if you are thinking of leaving the military there are 
or transitions throughout our lives. And anytime you PCS to the next duty station is a transition. And so this won't be your first one, but it will be very different than, than others. Um, so I would just encourage you to really think about the experience and capabilities that you bring to the table and couple that with your passion. And then where the two of those intersect is, is really where you should be. Um, and then to the second part of your question, Nan, where's my career going? I, I feel like this is a question that I'm talking about every day. Um, I, I have loved being in the shared services business and have really loved working uh, with our team. We have a great business and, and, and could continue there. Certainly our leadership has said that's the place where I could grow my career, but I definitely want to get closer to the purpose um, and to as we say, the good that J&J &J does. Um, so I am definitely looking at different areas within Johnson & Johnson, but one thing I know for sure, I wanna be at James Johnson & Johnson. So um, to, to some of the earlier points that were made, this is a huge company as are many companies in the healthcare industry um, and, and just companies across corporate America, there are always options within your org. And so, I'm looking at some of our public health work, um, some of our, certainly on the commercial side of the business, I feel like being in the shared services has given me a great perspective of the work that we do on what we call our functional area side, but the commercial side of the business is, is, is where all the fun is, um, not really, but there is a lot of commercial side of the business and I just wanna have an opportunity to explore that a bit more. So as I continue to try to add value to global services on our functional side, I definitely look forward to moving into the commercial side of our business, um, hopefully in the not too distant future. Nice. Well, you've, you've both mentioned so far the, um, the nimble nature, sort of, I don't know how, you know, you're in a big company, so I don't know if nimble's right, but your ability to move around. And I know Katie, um, in your time there at J&J, you were able to move also from supply chain into marketing. So how were you able to make that transition? What was it like? Yeah, I, I would first start by saying it's not very uncommon to see that veterans transition from one career path to another. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, when you start in your career and you think back about what helped you succeed in the military, it was getting the job done you never had to really think too much about your next big career move because the military is gonna make that decision for you. There, there was somebody who was managing your career. You didn't really have to self-advocate for what was the next best thing for you to grow professionally. So I think self-advocacy is something that I, I'm still trying to learn, but I think you know, for veterans, it's a big transition to have to advocate for your personal goals and not just the goals of the organization. Um, you know, you think about every role that you've had in the military, you know, you've always put the, the, the needs of the military first. Um, so transitioning to what are, what are the best needs for me? Um, what's what's going to help me grow and not just, you know, help do a job is, is a transition that really helps you to understand where you're going to go um, and trying to really advocate for yourself in terms of where you want to go next. I was fortunate that I had a leader who um, in my career uh, said to me, you know, you are someone who works well with in teams and in groups and can get work done and actually solve problems. So you're never not going to have opportunities come to you. And, and it was so true. I, I, when I applied to J&J, &J, I applied to the first job. And then after that, different opportunities showed up uh, and I just took them. Um, I just looked at it and said, this, this, was, this is a good new opportunity. Um, but he basically said to me, you know, if you, you're always gonna have people who are gonna want you on their team to solve their problems for them. But, you know, what I don't want you to do is look back on your career after 20 years and say, I really grew my career in one area and I should have done this for myself. So self-advocacy is important. And then once you determine uh, where you wanna go, for me, when I figured out you know, where I wanted to go, not just what was the next opportunity that was being presented to me, and I was really thoughtful about that transition, uh, which for me, that interest was in marketing, I started to reach out to my network. Uh, the military is, is a big, big community. You know people who transitioned during the time that you transitioned, or maybe you served with and transitioned earlier, reach out to those folks who may be in that career that you're looking at. 
Um, and then I was fortunate to, to have Kathy in our organization that I reached out to who had made that same transition. Uh, so I, I would recommend you know, to all veterans who are looking at making a transition or to growing their careers, one, to try to learn that self-advocacy in terms of what's gonna help you professionally grow, and then two, to really leverage that network. The military gives us all one you know, strong foundation. We all have the same commitment to self, we're, we're, we're all selfless service, uh, we're all focused on selfless service, um, all made the same decision you know, to, to really serve our country. Uh, that's a common ground that no matter where you are um, in your career, where you are in life, you know, you can always go back to that um, and you have that common ground with individuals that you can then build upon. Uh, so my, my recommendation is that folks leverage their military network to help them make that transition. But you have to be cognizant that when you make a transition from one function to another, you're really asking people to take a risk on you. Um, take a risk on the fact that you may not have the experiences that other people have in that profession already, but that you bring other skills to the table. And that's where doing your homework and connecting with people within, in your network really helps because you can help identify what are those skills that are really going to help you make that jump from one part of the organization to another part of the organization. You know, if you do your homework, you'll start to realize that some of those skills that are needed to succeed in your new career path, you may already have from experiences either in the military or other experiences that you've had um, out, uh, once you've transitioned. Katie, you certainly made a good move to marketing. You are, you've got the right words and the energy yeah. going. So um, since you're in that space in the marketing world, we're seeing this evolution in healthcare. Can you maybe tell us about some of the trends that you're seeing? Yeah, uh, I would say that healthcare is definitely a lot in, in the news um, these days. One of the things that you know, we really see um, really impacting healthcare and healthcare for the future is personalization. Uh, whether we look at our consumer brands where individuals want products that are built specifically for them, or we think about our pharmaceutical business where you are coming up with a new therapy, you're not usually treating someone who just has diabetes. Usually they have you know, one condition and there's other conditions that they also have. Um, additionally, when we think about our medical device business um, and surgeries, you know, everybody's bones are of different size, you know, my, uh, my femur is different than my husband's, it's different than my children. So, you know, everyone wants something that's uniquely made for them. I think uh, most industries are being impacted in that way, but the healthcare industry, there's more of a demand um, from consumers really to have medicine that's personalized to them. And I think that's a trend that we've seen. I think, you know, the one thing that I think all industries are impacted by today is COVID. Um, and what, one of the things that, you know, when you're transitioning out of the military, you're going through your first couple of interviews, you know, there's a perception that people are going to have that you almost have to break through. There's a perception that, you know, you come from a very rigid, hierarchical organization uh, that you only just do as you're told and that you can't think outside the box, that you can't think creatively. Um, I, I would always, you know, kind of mention to people, my first job in the military when I went into Intel school I was learning about Russian and Chinese doctrine. And when I found myself in my job the very first day, I was in the middle of Iraq. So, um, you know, I wasn't trained for that. Um, you know, you have to kind of learn and be agile. I think nobody today, if you look at the healthcare industry, was prepared for COVID. Um, but that's where that agility and that ability to, you know, think differently, think on your feet, um, really helps us. Um, and it's, it's a skill that most veterans bring to the table. I would also say when it comes to personalization, right, um, you know, not, not one solution is applicable to everything. We think about every mission that you've had, whether some of the steps were the same, um, every terrain is different, every battle zone is different, every part of the world is different, and there's different things that you have to adjust your plans to. So even as, as you think about your own military career and how do you leverage the skills that you've learned, you know, you've already been personalizing every piece of every, your job by what it's going to be required to be successful in that area that you're focused in. Um, so, you know, the military takes us from one part of the world to another part of the world pretty rapidly. Um, and I think as veterans, we all learn to adjust and make sure 
that we adapt our plans uh, to be able to meet the mission in that new environment. Well, thanks. That I was going to ask you about experiences from the military that that helped you um, face that, but you've you've shared them with us, so that's terrific. It's a good thing for us all to, if we're going to transition, start to think about how we change those terms from military to civilian. So that was a nice lead in. Appreciate that. Um, well, we do have some questions from uh, those who are watching us. So let me go ahead and ask those, and we'll let you uh, amongst you choose who should answer. The first is, how do you think your military experience helped you prepare for a career at J&J, &J, which a little bit you've touched on, but what advantages or disadvantages did your experience provide you in your journey? Tag. Who wants to I'm happy, I'm happy to jump in. I'm sure either Eric or Katie, you can, you can add on to this. I, a lot's already been said on this, but um, it's funny, I, I don't, I think I've been asked about a thousand times in my career, what did, what did my either West Point or military experience do to help me? And I, I always narrow it down to one, one thing. There are, lots of, there are lots of ways that it helped, but the most significant is I think the ability to get up every day and face the difficult um, and sort of, if it's not easy, tough shit. And that's a very acute um, military experience that, you know, it could be cold out or you don't want to get up at 4.30 in the morning and or, you, know, you don't want to be out in on a field exercise. You don't want to be deployed. You know, you, you learn to get up every day and build that gut and that grit that just makes it, um, it was, sort of sets you apart in terms of your ability to face difficult things. And I, I, I wouldn't say that, in a corporation like Johnson & Johnson that you face those kinds of difficulties, but there are day-to-day -day, um, re requirements or you know, things that separate people in terms of, are you, do you have the personal gut to keep going, to kind of push yourself through adversity, or you make a mistake and you learn from it and then you keep going. Um, a lot of that, I think, um, really came from that experience in the military and whether it's in healthcare company or any other walk of life, it's, it's a truly valuable, um, it's a truly valuable asset um, in, in my entire life. I think I would just add briefly to that, which is, um, you know, one of the things that the military brings is your mission focus. And I think it's, it's you got to deliver the mission. And as we leave the military and go into whatever walk of life we go into, we still have that mindset of we got to deliver the mission. And it's GSD, whether it's get stuff done, whatever you want the S to be, but it's, it's like we're going to accomplish the mission. And it kind of goes back to Katie's earlier comments of, you know, we're here to solve problems. We're here to make things happen. We're here to identify what the gaps are and build bridges to close those gaps. And I think that is a huge differentiator, um, that and the learning agility. You know, um, you talk about the VUCA um, where there is uh, being successful in the amb ambiguity and, and figuring out how to thrive and survive in, in areas where you just don't necessarily know what everything is going on, but you figure it out and you, you work with what you know and you pull together people that know more than you do and you build teams and you collaborate and you do what needs to be done to get stuff done. So I think that, you know, that plus grit plus really um, having the ability to motivate yourself is, is a huge part about, um, I think that I have taken from my military years to, to having success in, in corporate world. Yeah, I, I would just add to that, just remind yourself of that. Uh, remind yourself of the stuff that you've done the impossible missions, you know, that you were able to figure out a way with your team because it's no different in corporate America. You know, when, when you find yourself in a job where you think, you know, how am I gonna get through this challenge? Um, how am I gonna, you know, meet this business objective? You, you've met difficult objectives before in your life. Remind yourself of all those, those times. It may not be, you know, very, uh, the exact same objective that you're trying to achieve today. But a lot of times we tend to think as veterans, well, we don't have the skills or we don't have, you know, we, we've never met this business challenge. You've met challenges. You've, you've found ways to persevere when you didn't know 
you know, um, what was going to happen. Uh, so just reminding yourself of that usually helps, you know, to build your strength to, to, to get through that. Nice. Thank you all. Uh, Katie, you are so connected to our audience. The, one of the questions here is how would a career military healthcare professional begin to make the transition um, into a corporation like Johnson & Johnson? They said that's well known globally for health. So how would they make that transition to a J&J career leveraging an existing foundation in healthcare? And yeah. yeah, so I, I would just add, first of all, um, you know, you want to do your homework about whether it's Johnson & Johnson or any company that you're looking at. You know, a lot of times we get people who see the J&J &J name and they see how big of an organization is or they hear of someone, but really start to familiarize yourself with the organization. There's a lot of research you can do online you know, look at the, the news, look at the, you know, go on the company website, start to learn about the products that we provide, the different business units, so that you can, one, be sure that this is the path that you want to go down. And then, again, going back to my uh, first question of leveraging your network, you probably know folks who are connected to J&J &J or have worked here or are currently working here in your military um, network. So take a look at folks who you served with in the military, see where they're at. They may not be at Johnson & Johnson, but maybe they're in a, an adjacent um, part of healthcare and they work with our company. So just the more research you can do, uh, the better prepared you will be to really be able to make that transition. And most importantly, to make sure that you're sure that this is the path that you wanna go down so that you can really start to build a career in an area that you know you're gonna be happy with. I think that that's really informative. So similarly, or along this line, um, someone's asked when preparing your resume, what do you think would make you competitive against other applicants as a veteran? So what kinds of things as a military veteran should we highlight in our resumes um, that hopefully help us make us help us stand out in a positive way as opposed to oh, military background? Like, how is it perceived in the civilian world? I think now more than ever, we are, I think, broadly across corporate America, not just the Johnson Johnson, I think we are recognizing the value that veterans can bring to the table. Um, the agile learning, the um, fortitude, the grit, all the things that we've talked about so far. Um, agnostic of whatever your background was in the military, whether you had a healthcare background in the military or not, I think for sure, uh, many more leaders across corporate America are thinking about how do we bring more veterans into our organization. And Johnson & Johnson is leading the way, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about jobs that are available um, at the end of this, but we, we have two programs, one for military veterans um, that are younger in their career, sort of um, mid-career or only a few years in, or a little more, um, that are coming into Johnson & Johnson in our Military Veteran Leadership Development Program. And then we have what's called our Experienced Military Veteran Leadership Development Program, which just started. We, in fact, just brought in our first four cohort, uh, members of a cohort just this summer. And that's for veterans who have more than 20 years of experience in the military. And uh, it's all about, you know, as Katie was talking about doing your research, you really do want to make sure you're going to a company that values your service um, and that recognizes you. It, it can be a humbling experience to, to say, I've commanded troops in, in war, and yet I'm coming into a company that is going to put me at the, the lowest level of the food chain. Well, maybe that's important to develop certain skills, but you still want leaders that value your service and recognize the leadership and capabilities that you bring to the table. So. Um, those are just things that, that I would encourage you guys all to think about as you think about your next steps and, and where you want to pursue a career. Kathy, I feel like you might have some comments on that with your longevity with J&J. &J. Yeah, I mean, I think the, um, the opportunities at, at J&J &J for um, a, a military veteran, I, the thing that just rises to the top for me whenever I get asked that question is leadership always matters. It matters a ton in J&J. &J. As a matter of fact, when we, when we um, evaluate our, our colleagues at year end, we evaluate them 50% on what they got done and 50% on how they got that done. 
And so this leadership component, this ability to collaborate well, to work in teams, to inspire followership, all of those behaviors matter a ton in J&J. And when you just kind of think to your military experience and you're, you're living in that world day in and day out, it's just a huge advantage. It's not something that you need to learn. It's something you need to leverage in, in J&J while you're you're surrounded by um, other new colleagues who, in many cases, have to start at square one to learn um, those qualities that you bring into the organization. So it, it really is a, a unique, a unique advantage. It's wonderful. Okay, we have a few more questions for you. Um, I think let's do this one, and then we'll save the COVID question for after that. Uh, are there opportunities to maintain mobility in career paths with Johnson & Johnson, or are they are most opportunities stationary? Well, I'm going to, we encourage mobility beyond, it, 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 it's, a, it's a fun question because it's the thing that, that's great about folks who come to us from out of the military, from the military is that you come from a background where you, you move around you and you sort of it gets i would say we all have sand in our shoes where you just want to have a new experience and um and expect that you're going to that you're not going to be planted in one place um, for your career i do know people in jj who've stayed put i know lots of people who've moved around either company to company or geography to geography like katie and i um from function to function it's very much encouraged um, because those combinations of experiences grow you into a more well-rounded leader um, as you progress through the organization. Um, and if anything, we're looking for the kind of talent that has the flexibility to move through the organization to build themselves into stronger leaders. Nice. A uh, similar, uh, like a related question just came up that... Um not only the dynamic nature of your career, but how um, how does J and J support those that choose to work there and continue to serve um, through the reserve component? Yeah, so um, I can answer that one. I am actually the co lead, still the co lead for the Veterans Leadership Council, and that was actually one thing that we advocated for back in 2017 was to make sure that we took a look at our reserve and National Guard member policy. Uh, so at Johnson & Johnson, if you have to go to drill on the weekends and that happens to happen during a, a, a Thursday or a Friday, because sometimes your units um, change that, your time is protected. Um, plus, we also make sure that you get paid. Additionally, um, I happened to deploy once when I was part of the National Guard and I recall, you know, having to change my health care, my children's health care, because you go from a civilian health care system uh, for the company that you work for in, back into the military system. And it's a, it's a difficult thing to address when you are also trying to prepare to deploy. Uh, so at Johnson & Johnson, we actually changed those benefits. Your health care, your leave, your, all of your benefits at Johnson & Johnson actually stay intact during the period that you're deployed whether that deployment is for training or for a combat mission. So we ensure that uh, all of our employees who are serving in the National Guard and the Reserve continue to have and maintain their benefits and they don't have to make any changes. And if they're, a lot of times you have individuals who have a gap in pay where your pay in uh, your civilian employer may be higher than your pay in the military we actually ensure that your pay also stays intact for, the per for that period. Uh, so that's something that we uh, extended. We uh, completed that policy, updated that policy back in 2017, where now the full, the, for the full period that you are deployed, you maintain all of your benefits um, and it is no longer time bound. A lot of organizations um, have some uh, leave policies where it's time bound where you only get the benefits for a full year. This actually covers you for the, this policy actually covers you for the period of your orders. So if you're on a three month or six month training order or a 15 month deployment order, it covers you for the time that you are um, on duty for your military um, time. Very nice, that, that's a very supportive program. So it's really nice to hear. 
I think we'll take this last question. Um, that is, does J&J sponsor any additional formal education for employees that wish to apply that maybe either aren't qualified for, for right now or just formal education program support in the company for down the road? Well, I'll, I'll say that the, there are a number of continuing education programs in the company. Um, I, the, in addition to our leadership development programs, which offer sort of on the job training and exposure to a couple of different functions, um, most of our programs require you to be in the company. Um, so it's not a pre-employment um, training as much as it's inside of the company to pre either prepare you for your next role. Some of them, some of them are um, master's programs or um, educational programs outside of the company and a very, very strong um, curriculum of skill building um, um, opportunities inside the company. So for example, if I joined the company and I was in supply chain and I wanted to learn you know, finance for non-financial managers, I have the opportunity at any time to take uh, training in a host of different uh, categories to brush up my own personal skills and I can do it on my time and on my schedule as part of J&J's education curriculum. Nice. Uh, Katie, Erica, do you have anything to add to that? Because I think we're wa I'm watching our time and we're coming to the close of our hour. No, I think Kathy covered most of the programs that we had. Yeah. OK. Well, um, as a reservist, uh, I J&J has been on my list as a company that I'm going to look at. And now that I have this stronger network with the three of you. I'm going to go do my homework and see what skills I could bring and maybe apply to J&J. So Katie, maybe could you tell us how to do that? We'll, we'll, let, uh, we'll share a screen again so we can see that. Yeah, perfect. So first you want to go on careers.jnj.com and the bottom there towards uh, the bottom left of your screen, you'll see an ability to search by job title, by location um, or keyword if you're looking for a role within a particular part of Johnson & Johnson. And we also wanted to just highlight a couple of roles that we know are open. Um, so the next slide actually shows some open roles uh, within the organization that some folks may be interested in and the locations in terms of where their, those roles are located. Well, thank you. Those are uh, some interesting positions and it's good to see that there, there's some that are actually open right now. They're not just uh, interest gathering things. So that's wonderful. So um, I'm sure many of us will be looking um, for all of us. Uh, so thank you, thank, thank, thank you ladies for joining us and sharing so much about your experiences at J&J. I want to um, invite the audience to join us next time, uh, about two weeks, December 29th at 12 Eastern and 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, join us as we hear Dr. Joan Johnson Fries, who is a professor of national security affairs at the Naval War College, speak to us about women, peace, and security. And our moderator will be our SSLA public affairs officer, Lieutenant Commander Laura Steger. She's with the US Navy. Um, and after this session, some of you may be wondering how you can become an SSLA member and you just wanna to go to www.cleader.org slash join. And there you will find some information about joining. It's very um, economical. I looked it up this weekend to answer a question for someone. And what can you get as a member? Well, we've highlighted some benefits right here, discount uh, registration to our annual Jewels event. Um, database of members, our membership is growing by leaps and bounds. So we hope you'll join us. There is a private Facebook group. There's opportunities to build and lead a task force if you are um, in an area where there are a lot of military women and you want to have your own SSLA task force, let us know. You can help us out on committees like this. I know um, Corinne and Teresa would love it if people would help us with the future version of this virtual series because we think we'll keep it going. There are members only events. Um, we just recently started a leadership book club and that has had a phenomenal response. 
And then also you, um, you do get early registration access to this virtual series. So that's neat, be the first one to sign up. And then follow us on all of our social media platforms. Um, you can check out the upcoming Jules virtual series events. There'll be more information added to the to our own website and to Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram. I myself just signed up so I could watch it on Instagram because that's the one that's that I can follow. So check us out there. And then we hope you will stay in touch as you uh, and watch for updates on the 2020 Joint Women's Leadership Symposium. Uh, at some point we all will get to be around each other and not just be virtual. And so we look forward to seeing you in person in Norfolk sometime in 2021 for our Joint Women's Leadership Symposium 2021. And again, just a big thank you to Johnson and & Johnson and to Katie and Erica and Kathy for spending some time with us and telling us about your careers and how you think we can um, bring some of our military experience to J&J. &J. So we thank you for your dedication to helping us fulfill our vision of empowering a network of strong and inspirational women leaders who serve. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks.